Tracheostomy Primer by Dr. Stephen Rosenblatt and Dr. Nicholas Wolter. My name is Stephen Rosenblatt, and I'm a pediatric otolaryngologist. The goal of this lecture is to provide some basic background information about tracheostomies. At the end of this video, the viewer should be able to understand basic airway anatomy relevant to a tracheostomy, indications for a tracheostomy, how a tracheotomy is performed, the working parts of a tracheostomy tube, and common tracheostomy accessories you may encounter. Basic Airway Anatomy Normal respiration requires air to pass through the nose and mouth into the pharynx, through the larynx, and then down to the lower respiratory tract. Obstruction at any of these sites can lead to respiratory distress, and depending on the site of obstruction, can prevent intubation and necessitate a tracheostomy. A brief discussion of the basic anatomy of the upper airway is important for understanding complications relating to tracheostomy management. The larynx itself is divided into three contiguous areas. The supraglottis, which includes the epiglottis, false vocal folds, and arytenoid cartilages. The glottis, which includes the true vocal folds themselves, and the subglottis, or region immediately below the true vocal folds. The subglottis is the only part of the airway that is made of a complete cartilaginous ring that is called the cricoid cartilage. The trachea is made of a series of U or C-shaped cartilages. The pediatric larynx differs from the adult larynx in several important ways. First, the pediatric larynx is funnel-shaped, with the most narrow point being the subglottis within the cricoid cartilage, whereas in an adult, the narrowest point is the glottis itself. Another important difference between the adult and pediatric larynx is that the laryngeal structures overlap in an infant, almost like sections of a telescope. The hyoid bone sits over the thyroid cartilage, and the thyroid cartilage overlaps the cricoid. This will stretch out with age, but in an infant, the hyoid bone can make palpation of the thyroid cartilage landmarks difficult. And because the thyroid cartilage overrides the cricothyroid membrane, cricothyroidomy is generally not possible in children. Finally, the pediatric larynx sits higher and more anterior in the neck than in an adult patient. Indications for a tracheostomy Oftentimes you'll hear the words tracheotomy and tracheostomy used interchangeably. However, a tracheotomy is the act of making a hole in the trachea, whereas a tracheostomy is the actual opening created from the skin to the trachea. In general, there are three main indications for performing a tracheotomy. 1. Acute or chronic upper airway obstruction, 2. Prolonged mechanical ventilation, or 3. The need for pulmonary toilet. Understanding why your patient has a tracheostomy is critical for dealing with tracheostomy complications. In an emergency, patients who undergo tracheotomy for prolonged mechanical ventilation or pulmonary toilet can usually be reintubated from above if necessary. However, if the indication was upper airway obstruction, Careful consideration needs to be given to the situation to determine the best course of action. Performing a tracheotomy. During the procedure itself, the layers of the neck are carefully identified and separated, creating a tract down to the trachea. Prior to finding the trachea, the thyroid gland is usually encountered. The surgeon may choose to move the gland out of the way or divide the gland to expose the trachea. In a child, two stay sutures are usually placed through the second and third cartilaginous rings on either side of the trachea where the tracheostomy incision will be made. The purpose of the stay sutures will become apparent in the next video. A vertical midline incision parallel to the long axis of the trachea is made through the second and third cartilaginous rings and the tracheostomy tube is inserted with an obturator. The obturator is similar to a stylet that sits within the tracheostomy tube itself. The thin rounded end of the obturator protrudes just slightly beyond the tip of the tracheostomy tube itself and facilitates insertion. Once a tracheostomy tube has been inserted, the obturator is removed and the position is confirmed by CO2 return or by direct visualization with a bronchoscope. Typically, within three to five days, this tract will scar and mature, but prior to this, reinsertion of the tracheostomy tube must be done carefully and by experienced personnel to avoid inserting the tracheostomy tube in between these layers, creating a false passage. Tracheostomy tubes. A tracheostomy tube is a curved ventilation tube that sits within the trachea below the level of the larynx. The tracheostomy tube usually has two main components, the tube itself that serves as the airway and the faceplate. 
The faceplate has two flanges that allow the tracheostomy tube to be secured in place by neckties. The faceplate also usually has information printed on the surface that describes the type and size of tracheostomy tube. Multiple models and different brands are available, but generally speaking, tracheostomy tubes can be divided into two broad categories. The first is the presence or absence of a cuff. Cuff tubes have an inflatable balloon at the distal end, similar to an endotracheal tube. When this cuff is up, all of the air and pulmonary secretions pass through the tracheostomy tube itself. A cuff tracheostomy tube is necessary if a patient requires mechanical ventilation in order to maintain a closed circuit. The second broad category is the presence or absence of an inner cannula. Inner cannulas are not commonly found in neonatal or pediatric tracheotomy tubes, but will often be seen in older children with adult-sized tubes. Common accessories. You may encounter various tracheostomy accessories, like a Swedish nose or speaking valve. The Swedish nose is a type of HME, or heat moisture exchanger, which helps make up for the fact that the nose and mouth are no longer humidifying and warming inspired air. Small sponges capture expired moisture and help to warm and humidify inspired air. A speaking valve, or passimere valve, functions as a one-way valve at the end of the tracheostomy tube. When breathing in, air passes through the tracheostomy tube, but when breathing out, or speaking, the valve is forced closed and the air travels around the tracheostomy tube and out of the mouth. It is important that a speaking valve must never be used with an inflated tracheostomy tube cuff, as air trapping will occur, and patients can develop a tension pneumothorax, which can be fatal if not recognized promptly. Lastly, a tracheostomy tube must be secured snugly, and is typically done so with a soft Velcro tie. Loose ties can lead to movement of the tracheostomy tube within the stoma. This can cause bleeding, granulation tissue formation, or displacement of the tracheostomy tube into a false passage or out of the trachea. These complications are easily avoidable by ensuring a snug fit at all times. This concludes our instructional video regarding tracheostomy basics. In this video, we reviewed basic airway anatomy relevant to a tracheostomy, indications for a tracheostomy, how a tracheotomy is performed, the working parts of a tracheostomy tube, and common tracheostomy accessories you may encounter. Thank you for watching. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.